setting up a desk can be a daunting task. There's so many different things that you have to choose from, starting with the tabletop, and then you have to decide what monitor do you want, what computer do you want, and what peripherals do you need to make your desk setup the most effective and hopefully be the most productive and the most comfortable so you can be comfortable in your own workspace. Now, over the past four years, I have used about four to five different desks, and I have landed on this solid white tabletop that I really enjoy. It's from Ikea and I think it is the best thing that you can get. Over those four years I did a lot of research, tried different desks, and I think this is possibly the best one even for your setup. Let's talk about why. Now the desk is always the most important part of a desk setup because it is the workspace that you want and you can choose from different sizes. Sometimes if you don't have the space, you might need to get a smaller desk. But if you do have the space for it, I recommend that you go for something that is wider, not necessarily longer, but having that width of the desk allows you to have more room to put more peripherals as well as having a larger monitor, especially if you're someone that likes to keep the monitor on its original stand rather than having an arm attached to the desk itself. Now as for the desktop itself, there are plenty of options out there. You can go with a wooden countertop or you can go with a solid color one like I have here. I chose the white because I really like the white aesthetic. I like how it reflects a lot more light and it makes my scene seem a little bit cleaner and I really enjoy the way it looks. Now if you do live close to an Ikea, I recommend that you check out all of the desks they have there. Go ahead and take a trip down and just see all the different options that they have Worst comes to worst, you at least get to see exactly what these desks look like in actual person. That way you can see whether you prefer the wooden countertop or whether you prefer a solid uh, single color top. Now, like I said, this isn't my first desk setup. I used to use a wooden countertop one and the length of it was 74 inches, which is about six feet. And honestly, it was really great to have all of that length but at the same time, it took up a lot of space. Yeah, it gave me a little bit more space for me to work in, but at the same time, I didn't have enough space to put other things around my home office and make it cozy and have more things around. The only way that I could have done that was buying more desk drawer units, but I don't really like having everything inside of a drawer, especially when I want to display it. So because of that, I went ahead and bought this sit-stand desk from Ikea. I believe it's the Trotton... Um, I don't even know the name of the tabletop, but I will go ahead and link it down below. Um, I went ahead and bought this as my YouTube setup desk. I was using this to make YouTube videos and I really liked the flexibility I had from having either a sit down desk or also raising it and making it a standing desk, which honestly I really enjoyed because throughout the day I get tired of staying sitting all day. My watch will remind me it's time to stand up, it's time to take a walk, take a few steps. So it is nice to have that uh, flexibility so that throughout the day you can sit and stand as you please. Now having a sit stand desk does improve productivity because it allows you to have more energy as you sit and stand throughout the day and it also burns a whole more extra eight calories than sitting. Although I think I burn a lot more calories hand manually lifting this desk rather than having an automatic one. Now, like I mentioned, I did buy this desk from Ikea, so it is relatively budget friendly. I believe I paid around $270 for the combination of the, the manual sit stand uh, frame as well as the tabletop. And it does wobble a little bit. I'm not exactly sure if this is due to me putting it together wrong or if it's just because it's from Ikea, but it doesn't really bother me. It doesn't really mess with the frame of the desk itself. I have put monitor arms on it and it holds everything up just fine. It doesn't wobble while you're working on it. It only wobbles whenever you're trying to move it around. Now, just like with the desks, over the past few years, I have tried different Macs. And this year I went ahead and upgraded from the M1 Mac mini to the 16 inch MacBook Pro so that I can go ahead and do all my design work as well as run my side business on this machine. And honestly, I did not upgrade because of the power. I think the M1 Mac mini had enough power for everything I was doing, but rather I switched because of the portability of a MacBook Pro. 
Now for a little backstory, during quarantine, me and my wife used to go around and try different local coffee shops here in Arizona. And this year we decided that we wanted to go back to that and go ahead and try different coffee shops as well as get some work done, get away from all of the distractions we have here at the apartment, get away from everything else. That way we can sit at a coffee shop and dedicate only time to working on our personal content creation. And for this reason, I needed a machine that was able to handle all of the video editing work, all of the design work, as well as website development. And this machine has done great for that reason. Now over the past years, when I got the Mac mini, I was also using my iPad Air fourth generation. And I was using this machine kind of as my middle ground of portability whenever I wanted to go out and work on stuff. I would take the iPad Air and type up some, some uh, scripts or anything like that. But honestly, after a while, this keyboard of the 11 inch is relatively small compared to the MacBook Pro and my hands would be cramping up. I would constantly miss keys because I would be coming from a larger keyboard and only on the weekends would I be using the 11 inch magic keyboard and I would be missing a lot of keys and I honestly got really frustrated with this. So upgrading to this normal size keyboard has really helped with that as well. Now, some of you might be asking yourselves if portability was the main reason I went with the MacBook Pro, why did I choose the 16 inch over the 14 inch? And honestly, the reason for that was the screen size itself. Not really anything extra like oh, I'm gonna get more power, the power efficiency, the different power modes. It was honestly just because it was a larger screen. So because all of my editing is being done portably, I always have liked having a larger screen to see more detail, whether it's in a photo that I'm editing on it or whether it's having more room on a timeline whenever I'm editing a video. Having a larger screen has really helped me, especially in case you haven't noticed, I use glasses, <laughs> I'm really blind, so having a larger screen to look at all the content is always a big plus. Now, another main part of my desk setup is my notebook, or I guess my iPad Pro. Now, I say this because I have been using the analog method of using a normal moleskin or mole, whatever, however you pronounce that, their notebooks and using pens and paper with that. But recently I switched to using GoodNotes 5 on my iPad and I honestly feel like I'm never gonna go back to physical again. Now recently I had been having a lot of trouble with writing down notes. I was walking or on my commute or at work, I wanted to take down notes and it just wasn't feasible for me to always carry around a physical notebook for me to take out and jot down notes. So having everything digitally is a lot of help because anywhere you're walking or anywhere you're at, you can just take out your phone and simply write down the note. And then whenever you get home, you get to your workspace, your personal place, you will have those same notes digitally on wherever you go. Now I recently upgraded my iPad Air 4th gen to the M1 iPad Pro. I went again, just like with the MacBook, it was because of the larger screen, not really because I needed more power from the iPad Air. So I honestly, unless you really want that larger screen or you need the extra uh, screen real estate, I don't really think you should upgrade from the iPad Air and not even the M1 chip should be a big difference now because the fifth generation iPad Air that came out about a month ago, now that has an M1 chip. So I don't really think it's worth spending the extra money unless you really want or I guess you really need that extra screen real estate. Now I didn't get the Magic Keyboard for this iPad Air and I did get the same uh, paper-like screen protector. It's not really the brand one, it's just a random one off of Amazon because I really like the feel of having a matte screen protector whenever you're writing down notes or whenever I'm drawing. It gives it a little bit more of that uh, paper feel, just like the name implies. It makes it feel like you're writing on paper and it has worked really great on the iPad Air. So I went ahead and bought the same one off of Amazon for the iPad Pro. The speakers on this iPad are also really great for watching content. Me and my wife use it whenever we get on the treadmill. It has a little stand. We put it on there and it works perfectly. We can hear the videos we watch as well as not being drowned out by the noise of the treadmill, of the belt moving, or us walking on the treadmill itself. Now for the peripherals, I went with a 32 inch monitor by LG as well as the Logitech MX combo, which is the MX keys, as well as the MX Master 3 mouse. Now for the keyboard and mouse, it did take me quite a while to land on these. I went from cheap Amazon keyboards to uh, the Keychron keyboard, which was a little bit too tall for me. It started hurting my wrists. 
I, and I ended up landing on these. I think it's a very nice keyboard. I really like that it has three different device support. That way I can go ahead and use it for my own personal MacBook, as well as when I work from home, I just go ahead and click a button and it switches straight over to my work MacBook. And then the third device that I have hooked up to this keyboard is my iPad Pro. Now, the reason I use this keyboard with my iPad Pro is to have those hotkeys just like you would on a Wacom tablet to kind of either undo or redo, copy and paste. Um, they have like little shortcut keys. Well, I use this whenever I'm editing, whenever I'm designing or whenever I'm literally drawing on this iPad, I use the Control Z or I guess Command Z uh, and then the copy and paste. Just because the gestures on a lot of these apps are a little bit funky, I'd rather use a physical keyboard. Now, as for the mouse, I ended up landing with the MX Master 3. I have tried again, just a cheap one I bought off of Amazon. I even bought the, the MX uh, Anywhere 3, and it was a really good mouse, but I ended up needing a lot more buttons, especially the horizontal scroll wheel. It's a lot better than having to hold down that side button and then use the top scroll wheel. I use it a lot for working on spreadsheets at work, as well as uh, navigating the timeline on Final Cut Pro. So I think this is a really great mouse. And again, you do have that three different device support. So I can use it to edit stuff on my own personal MacBook, as well as use it for spreadsheets whenever I hook it up to the work MacBook. Now this monitor, I went ahead and bought it last year on during the holidays. It was November, December. So I've had it for about three months or so. And I honestly really enjoy the screen size as well as the monitor and the colors it emits. It's really great. It's really bright. And it has two HDMI connections, which allows me to hook up the MacBook as well as all my gaming setup for whenever I want to game on this monitor. Now, like I mentioned earlier in the video, it does come with a Visa mount in case you want to put it on a monitor arm. I have used it with a monitor arm, but lately for these YouTube videos, I have been using this desk kind of as my dual setup for either taking photos on here or recording YouTube videos. So I do move the monitor quite a bit and it was getting difficult to move it around on that arm. And I didn't really trust it as much as something like the original stand that it came with. You can just pick it up and move it to one end of the desk wherever you're not, it's gonna be out of the way and you won't really damage the device. Now, the last part of my setup is everything behind me, my little home office. And like I mentioned before, you really wanna create an ambiance where you walk in and you're inspired to get some work done. I do have one of the shelves is dedicated strictly to my gaming setup. I have three different gaming devices that I use. Now, the rest of my setup has a lot of the devices I own. And like I said, just a lot of inspirational things, a lot of things that when you walk in, you're excited to get to work, especially if you're a content creator and you do a lot of these things after work, it's really easy to just get home and kind of be discouraged, be tired, you have no motivation. So having a little home office where as soon as you walk in, you're inspired to start creating and always have fun with it is honestly great. So I highly encourage that you create your little home office and you put up things that are going to inspire you to keep creating content and don't stop and always enjoy what you're doing and be comfortable where you're at. That wraps up my desk setup. Let me know down in the comments, what things do we have in common? Do you have also a large monitor? Is there anything that you think I should change? Let me know down in the comments. Thank you guys for watching and sticking around until the end. Don't forget to subscribe if you're a content creator and want more tips or want to know other things that you can do to better your workflow. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed the content and I'll catch you guys on the next one.